Hey guys, back again for part three of uh, project three. So in other words, the third video, um, I'm hoping we'll kind of uh, cinch things up regarding this project. So we've got all the, the letter forms kind of mapped out and described using this initial design system that we created. Um, they're all on separate artboards. And the, this step is essentially all about these, these little forms kind of up here um, that I initially wanted to use. So here's A, B, and we've got to create another one for C, object, transform, rotate, another 90 degrees. And then we got to rotate this guy, another 90 degrees, object, transform, rotate, 90 degrees. So you can kind of see we've got four different sort of tools that we can use to integrate into this project. And, you know, I like to work diagrammatically. And so, um, and I also, you know, when I'm doing things like this, I like to think about CMYK, so cyan, yellow, magenta, and K for black, um, or paper, so black or white. So in other words, though, using those kind of basic kind of diagrammatic colors that really don't signify a whole lot except different stages in a creative process. And so what I'm going to do here is instead of using the cyan, because I used cyan, magenta, I could use yellow, but I think black is more appropriate for this project because I want to be able to see these things really clearly. And I want to use, there's no rhyme or reason as to how I'm going to use these, frankly, with exception that I'm just experimenting and having fun, but I'll see the, I'll, I'll see the opportunities. I'm just going to, again, trust myself and follow my intuition. But I do want to create a separate layer. I'm just going to call this um, letter, letter form accents. Um, intuitively, just kind of choosing that. And I'm not going to scale any of these up or down, by the way. Okay, so I need this. Actually, these need to be on this layer. Okay. I'll lock that layer down because I don't want to move anything here. But you see how now I've got these guys, I can just kind of lay them on top, start playing with them. Um, I also want to, I've been on snap to point while I've been doing this project, and I want to move from snap to point to snap to grid in my, pref in my uh, drop down view preferences. So snap to grid and now you can see if it, even if I'm using my cursor, how everything just kind of lines up perfectly with that grid. Remember when we were setting up our artboards, we very, very, we were intentional about making sure that our artboard was um, talking to the grid within the document. And so this is an opportunity I see right there. I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna have to duplicate these things quite a bit. So actually I should leave these up here copy and paste, and then place it, okay. And uh, I also want to put one on the bottom there. So I'm going to copy. I know this, you'll see how this all works, you know, when we're all done, okay. Um, I'm just, guys, I just want to have some fun right now. <laughs> Simple as that. Um, I want to use this one, but I also, my intuition is telling me that it needs to be inverted to go the opposite way. And so I'm actually going to copy this and I'm going to reflect it. So I'm going to come up here to object, transform, reflect, see that? And so now it's usable in this context because I'm just having a little fun here. Um, adding another layer to what I've been doing here, okay? And so I think using a minimum of one, possibly two for each of these would be appropriate. 
and look at the way I'm just kind of snapping these guys into the corner. You know, it's another kind of systemic way of thinking. Also, I can remove the grid. I don't need the grid right now. Hmm. I feel like this one wants to, guys, I'm just following my intuition, right? I don't have a plan except to, to have some fun and uh, to, to kind of be fluid with my thinking. But when you set rules for yourself, those rules facilitate the creative process to sort of resolve you know, relatively quickly. I really definitely, I think I definitely feel that this should be over here. Now I'm gonna, I like these truncated bottoms here, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna change anything there. Hmm. I think that this will fit really nicely down here. And I think that this one, let's see here. Um, it's weird. And you guys will see the value of this in a second. I know I want at least one on each page, and maybe one's, maybe, in all honesty, maybe two's too much. And I could easily just have one. Maybe that should be my rule that I'm setting for myself. Maybe maybe one is enough. Let's. I'm gonna stick to that rule. So I've just made a decision for my process. Yeah. What I'm really, you know, when I'm doing this, you know, folks, I'm looking at my screen, I'm thinking, if there are any pauses, you know, I'm, the real truth is that using white would be, it's it's more in line with what I'm thinking, because see how the white kind of, I'm, I'm thinking about using these to mask. And so when I change the color of that guy to white, you can see exactly what I'm thinking, how these guys can, can operate. but it's easier for me to see them when they're black right now. But eventually I am gonna make them white. I just want everyone to know that, okay? It'll be helpful in your understanding. Hmm. This one's a little more of a little bit more of a pickle. But rules are rules, right? I mean, somehow, you know, I, I get this idea in my head about these rules, folks. And it, for me, it, it's helpful. And uh, I'm trying to share that with you. But you can set rules for yourself and stick to them. You can solve design problems. I like that. Let me stick with that. One female gesture per artboard. Okay, that's my rule. This is kind of interesting. I'm going to use this down here. 
Ironically, this one doesn't feel like it needs to be white. In fact, it should be blue, right? Because I approached this letter form a little bit differently. This one on the bottom. This one is, uh, I guess, you know, the technical term for it in design is there's figure and ground. Ground is the background. This is the figure. This is the foreground, right? And so this is actually going to blend into this blue foreground. But actually what we're reading here is the background, almost sort of a reductive method, right? So that this, this is definitely a different approach. I probably won't use that letter form, folks, just to be honest, because it's so far different from the others. <coughs> Excuse me. Really beautifully right up top here. This is perfect. Doing some wonderful things. And this one. to reflect it. So object, transform, reflect. Save it. It's fine. I like it. Hmm. This one's a little bit of a pickle. But you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow my rules, guys. You gotta follow the rules. I'm really not a rule follower, but in this case, I support following the rules, okay? There we go. Now, don't think, remember, this is gonna be paper. So just to give you an idea of what I'm really thinking here, this is how it's actually going to look. So, oh. really like that sharp corner. I don't want to mess with it at all. But I feel like I can mess with this area here successfully. You gotta, you know, when you set these rules for yourself, you gotta trust that they're gonna work and that they're gonna tie things together. I'm going to move these down here so I can see a little bit more clearly. Okay. Hmm. I see an opportunity here, but I need to reflect. Um, yeah, perfect. I want to be experimental and see what happens. It's got to be reflected though. Again, transform, reflect, hit OK. And just to have a hunch about these things, guys, I'm just following my nose. But actually, there's not enough. I'm cutting off too much meat here. So I need to, it's not right. I gotta, gotta take a back step. I do see an opportunity here, but it needs to be reflected again. Object, transform, reflect, boom. Oh yeah, that's nice. Yes, 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 yes. Feels good. And Okay, I see an opportunity here to use that form in this circumstance. So you get, you can kind of see how these opportunities just kind of present themselves. You know, and I guarantee you that you know folks are still going to read this as a Z. Trust me.
save it. I like this bottom of the H right there, but I think that we can get away with carving out some of the top up here. See that? Yeah. Or, that's what I'm basically doing. I'm, it's almost kind of like I'm masking, but it's sort of like an old school way of just collaging and masking. But the new way of doing this would be using the Pathfinder tool, but I'm not even gonna do that. All I have to do is just change the color of this again to white, and then you can kind of see what's happening there. Because I've got the system on top of everything. You can see the power of layers. It's that real nice consistent curve that's always happening. So again, you know, I wanna be able to see it for now. So I'm gonna keep them black, okay? This is a tricky one. I'm going to put, I mean, my spidey sense is telling me to work here in this corner, but it needs to be reflected, right? Beautiful, yeah. Mm, that's nice. And I, I see an opportunity here, guys. I just feel it, feel it. You know, when, when you're a good designer, you kind of learn to just see the opportunities, but also feel them and envision them, okay? I feel like I, it's like, Yoda is talking to Luke Skywalker. You have to feel the force flow within you. Yeah. All right. Let's see. I'll use this one again. I like it. This is interesting. Look, it's going to sort of carve into two separate areas. That's nice. Some kind of, it's a double win there with that one move. These are just, this is a rule that I've, I've set for myself and I've told myself or instructed myself to apply this rule to each of these letter forms, to take it to another place that is consistent because I want these letter forms to read consistently. Reflect. See an opportunity there. I like it. I think I'm going to work with that corner again. I think I've done that before. There it is. So I'm even starting to recognize these pieces. You know, design is visual problem solving, folks. It's all it is. So I, kind of, I, I feel like I do that a lot. I don't work with this vertical corner enough, so I guess I'm going to retract that. Put this up here, but obviously I have to reflect it. Mm. This is a pickle right here, but I think this hard corner here can be managed with a move like that, you know, because it's this beautiful moment right there where it's going to cut through, it's going to slice through. And I don't, I'm not working with the bottom of these letter forms very often, so there we go. And again, one of those circumstances where there is a double win. Save it. You guys got to save, 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 save. I'm about to save another version, by the way, too.
And this is really heavy up here. And I have a feeling that this will be of use. So I need to reflect, but I actually need to reflect the opposite way. I need to reflect horizontally. See that? There we go. I'm done, you guys. I did it. All every single one of those guys has a system. I'm gonna save it. And I'm gonna call this one accents black. And I'm gonna duplicate this entire layer. So I'm gonna drag the layer into the plus sign. I'm going to lock down and hide one. And see, now I've got an exact copy of that. But now I'm going to select all of the fill colors that are black. So all of these guys get selected. And I'm going to change it to white. And now you can kind of see how that design system is masking and carving. See that? You'd think it's not there, but the, the forms are still there. It's the power of the software, folks. The power of thinking in layers. There it is here. Again, beautiful. So I mean, this is a, a completed project. And the next step would be to simply come up here to file, export, export as PNGs. And I'm gonna create a new folder specific for export. Okay. And you gotta make sure to click use artboards. Okay, use artboards, engage it, hit export. And you gotta up the quality. 72 is not nearly good enough. Let's go medium for this circumstance with a white background, not a transparent background in this circumstance. Hit okay. Now it's it's gonna think and and uh, purge all of these separate documents out. Let's take a look. Go to our project folder. Let's see, getting there, there it is, export. And look at this. Right there. And the next thing that we could do is we could remove the system, but I actually like having the structure there to, to view and see. So that's my preference. So that's how you would export the PNGs. But I'll tell you something, that's really not the way that I think that this project should be finalized. So I'm gonna save another version of this. Well, first, yeah, well, I'll leave it, okay. Because I, I archived the black versions too, which is nice. So, you know, I'm kind of leaving breadcrumbs within the document for the next designer that might need to use this. But first things first, I gotta save this. And now what I realize I want to do, go guys, I want each of I want to use InDesign to place these word, these letter forms. And the way InDesign works is it's happier when there's one artboard being placed. Well, the problem is we have many, many artboards here. And I've saved a version of this Illustrator file for process. But now I'm going to save an Illustrator file for each of these artboards, if that makes sense. So let's see, seven times four. I mean, guys, I know it seems like overkill, but believe me, it's not. I need 28. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to work smarter, not harder. I'm going to save it. I'm going to close it. And then I'm going to come over here. Find my 
folder or you know, wherever my file is living. It should be in here. Better be. There it is. And it's the 1.1, 1 .1, not the other, because that one was the initial. This is the one I want to keep. I'm going to copy it. And look how it's a small file. It's only 1.3 megabytes. Copy it. I'm going to create another folder. This is just the way I'm doing things, guys, because I want, we call it just, um, it's just letters, right? And, uh, I've just copied an exact copy of this into that letters, but I, There are, there are, um, how many, let's see, uh, 28. So I'm trying to think of the best way to kind of frame this. But it's really 14, because then there are two versions. So for example, I'll call this 1A. And I'm gonna duplicate because I need 28 of these. Duplicate. Okay. This could take a little while, but we're just, we're gonna go through the process. Duplicate. Let's see, one, two. Oops. All right. Yeah, so bad move. Making that alias. We don't want this. There's one A. One B. See, I'm trying to get organized here. One C. One B. One E, one F. One G, right? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I know that's counterintuitive because they're, <laughs> I know what I'm doing. And trust me, I understand. Um, but actually, um, This should be two A. You guys, bear with me for a second. Two A. Oops. Three A. A nine A nine A eighteen A now remember guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. But remember, there's two versions. So now I need uh, example one B. Now I just need the 
modify these so instead of reading A, they read B. To be organized with this stuff in this, right? And we could even be really meticulous. We could create a, a couple of new folders in here. First one, call it Matthew. Right? And that's one through seven. Next one is in Jordan. Uh, six. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So that's all the A's. Now we need to duplicate these because each of those. Right? This might seem like overkill, guys, but just trust me, you know, bear with me as far as where I'm going. Please, okay. I'm just trying to create a working project folder. That's all I'm trying to do. back to this one because we need to make some changes open with well, let's do it one at a time one a and one b bear with me uh, i'm going to unlock these and i want you guys to relax but i'm going to have to delete some things i have to make sure i'm deleting the right things okay but one a and one b i don't need any of this stuff The real truth is 1A is this one right here. So I don't need any of this. So it's going to be a little bit of work. But I'm just prepping the document because I want to be able to use this stuff successfully. And I also need to go through and I need to del uh, delete these artboards. This is a sort of a tedious moment in the project, but it's important because being organized with these ideas and projects is really crucial. Okay, so now I've got one A, I'm gonna save it. Now I've got one B, don't need this one, right? So that, I got that one set up, one A. One B is this letter form. Now, I'll just use my artboard tool. Just delete them. And I apologize for how long this is going to take, guys, but I think it's really important. I'm going to move as quickly as possible. So 1A and 1B are set. Well, now we've got to go over here. 2A and 2B. Everything. Unlock everything. Now I'm going to go to 2A. 2A is this guy right here. To be very certain and organized that you're keeping or deleting the right things, because this is indeed 2A. That's what I need. You want to keep this artboard, but you want to get rid of all these. Notice I'm just selecting and deleting. Do not delete this artboard, though. You need that. Okay. Saved. Now, 
to B is this version of A, ironically. I know it doesn't seem right, but remember this is <laughs> the second letter and the second version, so 2B. Everything's unlocked. Everything except I get rid of everything except for 2B. Save it and look at now I've got these unique artboards for each letter that I am going to be using. And, you, and you'll see here in a little bit how I'm going to use that stuff. So just keep going, just keep swimming. Three A and three B. That means let's work with three A first. 3A is this letter T. I need to get rid of everything else. Three B is this letter T. That can go. Delete the artboard that you need. You've got to keep that artboard behind that 3B letter form. Save it. Look at you can kind of see pretty, pretty cool. Basically separating things out so that they're usable in a in an InDesign document. That's what I'm doing. I'm prepping my ingredients to do some good things here. I'm kind of working incrementally also, so I don't get confused. 4A. That's this T right there. Unlock things. Or B, which is this one right here, right? Gotta unlock everything. Keep four B. So it's going relatively fast, right? Could be worse. Okay, and 5B. It's better to do these one at a time or two at a time. Don't just open up all these. It, you'll get confused. Just trust me on that one. 5A and 5B. So one, two, three, four, 5A, 5B, right? So that's why I, I set up that system. Everything's unlocked, but wait a second. Gotta make sure you're 
uh, using the document that you need to be using. So I'm going to start with 5A. Little trick there, try to put the artboard here. You got to be careful. So, 5A. Oh, we're good. Now, 5B. Lock things. 5B. It's easier if you start from this end, at least the way I designed or developed my document. And then as you del delete, it will go to the next one. Just got to be careful and skip that one. Six A. Move on to those E's. A lot of process involved with design. Took us a while to get here, but it's worth it. All right. Now 6B, which is this E right down there. Lock things. Here are the artboards we don't need. Remember, I saved a master file of this with everything together. So, you know, I don't want to lose information or delete information. I'm just, that's why I'm creating duplicate files. And we've got 7A and 7B. Oops, I did not, that's not what I wanted to do. That's not a Photoshop file, Illustrator. Okay, so we're at 7A. And I'm gonna unlock this guy. Seven A, seven B. Not get unlocked. That's why we're not delete. A little bit closer. I told you. It's kind of nice. Uh, and then here's 7B. This is 7B. That's 7A. Now, I'm sure some of you can already guess where I'm going with this. I want to be able to use InDesign to place these letter forms. Okay. In a document, you know, whether I'm working on a record cover or a poster for an event, I want to be able to use it. And I'm setting up letter form illustrator documents that are unique to each letter form that can be placed in an InDesign document. So I'm done with all that. I mean, we're halfway there, guys. Uh, I'm just going to keep going. I don't want... Yeah, you can kind of see, I need to get rid of all of those ends here. This is going to be fun. Okay, let's start with 8, A and B. I'm getting closer. Be patient. 8, A. 
unlock don't need any of that right that's 8a right there that beautiful n Yeah, this is 8a, unlock everything. So, you know, we need that second version of that n. Beautiful. Notice how the preview has changed. Yeah. Don't open them all at once, trust me. Just go two at a time, I think that's plenty. My squirrel brain will run around so quickly and I'll be God knows where. Okay, so now we're at 9a, which is this beautiful i, right? Okay. So excited to see what you guys produce for this project. It's just, because, you know, what I did here, you're not, it, your job is not to copy what I'm doing or, or think that your project has to be like mine. I'm just, Giving you, I'm, I'm trying to guide you a little bit. That's all. Okay. Nine B. You know, this is painful. You know, listening to me talk about this over and over and over again. But excuse me, we're almost there. Nine B is that beautiful eye. These uh, disease ten A. Um, because what I'm doing here. It's just methodical thinking, you know, and project prep. And it's, and if you're thinking, gosh, this is a lot, you know, um, this is just what designers do. This is what artists do too, if you ask me, but um, it's getting organized. And B is that second Z. The extra artboards. Ooh, man, we're almost there. This is, I'm trying to go a little faster, but you know, you guys can take your time, you know, refill your coffee. It's kind of fun to see all these together, huh? All the hard work. And now we're at 11, 11A. Let me start is acting a little fine. It's okay. Because it's all backed up and saved, right? We'll be all right. Um, unlock 11A are the H's. Uh, 
uh, notice how these are all caps. It would have been interesting to do a whole other set, you know, with lowercase. But you know that turns into a, a typeface specimen. But um, you know this again. This this is meant to introduce the idea of just kind of designing some letter forms with you all, and to follow process and to to think about a theme that when the theme kind of stems from a diagram or or you know some curves you know that kind of repeat and give a sense of identity to the to the letter forms and and font or typeface okay so unlock 11b and then seven eight nine ten but i just want to make sure that's this second h down there save. I like that one right there. I like it when, you know, the unexpected surprises or moments that happened with the additional of the female accents. That was real nice. Okay, 12. A little closer. You can see the finish line. I don't know about you guys. So we're moving on to the O's. 12A. Make sure, you know, because by default, see how the tab is automatically going to 12B. Make sure you click on 12A so you don't get them mixed up. That's part of this orderly business that I want everyone to really kind of get used to or pay attention to. Um, another side note, I mean, I'm using Adobe Illustrator for this, guys. And sometimes in class, I notice that folks are using alternative ways to solve solutions. And I think that's great. But at some point, you're going to have to reckon with the fact. And I'm saying that very firmly, the fact that when you enter a design office, they are very much focused on Adobe InDesign and Adobe Illustrator. And some of these other things, it's great to have knowledge of, but at the end of the day, you really do need to be an expert at this stuff. You can't, you can't use alternative pathways in an office. You need to be able to use Illustrator. And so um, heads up. So with this particular project, I would highly suggest that you use Adobe Illustrator. And to take it a step further, even like the desktop version, because it's just more powerful guys ipads are cool but the, the desktop versions of these software applications they're just more powerful so 12 um, 8 9 10 11 12 that's this o right there okay i kind of like that o Thirteen A, so it's this beautiful N right there. Unlock it. Wait. Wait. We are almost there, folks. I can't believe it. Be worth the wait. It's like if you're waiting for something in the oven. It's worth it. Can be this other beautiful M unlock. And I'm curious to see what words you choose, you know, to describe you. And I, you know, I, again, I don't see myself as being, you know, uh, beautiful folks, but I do see that word as being beautiful. But I don't know if I would connect that with me. I'm 
Uh, in fact, I think the more apt descriptor of me is gruff. But Nijoni is a much more beautiful word to say and work with typographically. Last one. Fourteen A and walk. Beautiful. I think I was happier with some of these letter forms towards the end. But that's why it's nice to have multiples. And you'll see, especially when we're using InDesign, how those multiples can be handy. Fourteen B. This is the last one before we move on to InDesign. Let's fire up InDesign. So I'm done, I'm done working in Illustrator. And now, now let's say, for example, you're creating like that Grant Green live in Mozambique record cover. Let's say you're working on an LP record cover. Then you can use these assets that you've created to place in, in your publication design software. So whether it's a book cover, um, a, a record LP, packaging cover, whether it were an event uh, or a poster for an event, like a concert, you can just place these things, okay? So a new file, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep mine relatively simple. I'm gonna do, I want it to be just a, a 17 by 11. And this is not a, a publication project. It's really just an example. We call it placement, an example for literally just placing these assets using the software because you folks need to start understanding the power that happens when these applications start to collaborate, okay? Hmm. Turn the grid on, just like we would in Illustrator, right? Start doing some layout. Actually, what I want to do, there, if I remember correctly, they're five by four, right? So I'm gonna, here's the rectangle frame tool. Just click, and then you can type in some dimensions. And I want it to be four by five approximately, because guess what? That's the exact aspect ratio of the letter forms that we've created. And also, although I don't want them to be that big, I can hold shift with my left pinky and make these much smaller. See that? Now look at this. This is all very fluid right now. I'm always talking about the grid, guys. I love the grid. So guides and grid, snap to document grid. So now when I push and pull these, look how beautiful, beautifully it's just snapping to the grid. Okay. See if this is going to work. I'm creating seven opportunities. Or some letters. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, seven. It's not going to quite fit, is it? Well, just select it and just kind of do the same thing. Just kind of squinch it down. There you go. Same aspect ratio. Now I want this to read. I'm trying to lock it down to that grid. And I want to scale these down just a little bit further. 
just to show you the power of InDesign. Okay. It may seem like a simple document, and I, I guess it is, but it, now, hold on. I'm going to select this guy right here. Actually, you know what I can do? I haven't even... Hmm. Now I'm going to keep it just one. I was about to say I could duplicate this and do it twice, but I mean, what I want to do is show you how I can go in and start placing these assets, teaching archive. I have to go to my project folder, and because I've been organized, I know exactly where to go to find this stuff, right? Assets. Letters, Matthew, 1A or 1B. And look, you even get a preview. I'm going to go with 1A. And look at how it's not fitting in there, but I can select the rectangle and then just say object fit. There you go. And see how this little icon is indicating that is that it is synced up and connecting. Okay, save it. Save that in Project Three Assets. I'm going to save it with the letters. Okay. Same thing. Now I got to choose an A. Camera one, camera two. You guys are. If you've been watching, uh, what is it, Wayne's World 1, camera 1, camera 2. I'm going to go with camera 2. Mm -hmm. I think I like that one. Four. I like that one. Actually, never mind. I like that one because it's uniquely different. I look at this. I can select all of them at the same time, then come up here to object, fitting, fit content proportionally. Boom. Now I can see everything. M A T T. Right? I, which H do you prefer? That one. E. Like that one. That one. Definitely that one. Object. Bit content proportionally. Now I can see it. That's kind of fun. Now, the thing that we could do also, you know, these are right up next to each other, but so like here, this circumstance indicates to me that a little bit of padding might be appropriate or not. Maybe it's kind of nice that they're up against each other, you know, kind of almost sort of, sort of creates this cursive sensibility. Anyway, see what InDesign is doing. That's the purpose of this last step in the project. You guys need to start using InDesign to cinch and stitch things together. We're not done. Put in the zoning folder. Camera one, camera two. I'm going to go to camera two. It's beautiful. Definitely that one. Notice how I'm just making decisions. I can just kind of sense which ones I like. I know, but at least I've got options, right? Mm. Let me go with that one. Is that O? I think that's a better O. I like it. N. Mm. I think that's a stronger N right there. Right on I, the last I. Select all of them, object, fit content proportionally. 
All right. You can export, obviously, in um, an InDesign as well, file, export, choose the location. I'm going to make this a uh, I'm going to export a PDF print. Compression, uh, 150, 150. That's all good. Export. Now go to your project folder. Take a look. There it is. Hmm. Now that's something that might concern me if I were going to send this to a client. So um, just FYI, so you might have to go back and actually use the Pathfinder tool and cut into those letter forms, okay? Wow, what a fun project. And I know it was a lot, but I think this project is um, really valuable for your growth as a designer. So, um, Thank you.